um, feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Uh, and Becca did mention prior that if you don't want your face to be on YouTube, just let us know. We'll go ahead and make sure that we edit that out. Um, so welcome to my class. This is going to be a double hoop class um, with a focus on tech, basics of tech and concepts, and also framing, which I, sorry, my mom's texting me. Hi, mom. <laughs> Um, uh, framing, which is my favorite, um, or the way that my brain works when I think about my double hoop work. So I'm going to start off with what we, what I call the grid or what in the tech world we call the grid. Is everybody familiar with the grid? Okay. So thinking about, can everybody hear me? Okay. Can I get a thumbs up or a hoop wave? Cool. So thinking about yourself in terms of a nine square grid will help your brain to kind of get in this mode of this ge these geometric shapes. So we want to think about a nine square grid. So we have our top, our two sides, our two bottom corners, our middle, our chest is the center, and then our and then below our head. So your from your shoulders to your hips is really that center square. And I want you guys to just start thinking about yourself as like a TikTok toe box. So right now we have our hoops off to the side. We can go up like this in a figure eight and keep yourself in the center. We can go down, off to the right. We can kind of move around a little bit. Don't forget your corners. So just go ahead and play with that for a little bit and try to think of your circles as squares, in squares. And you can use two hands. You can maybe do an isolation in here rock around a little bit, whatever's comfortable for you. All right, so you can play with speed too. So you can do a little slow and then a fast, quick little guy when the beat drops. You can flip your wrist uh, so it's facing up, down, side. Don't forget your corners. So just to start think, thinking in that mode of nine squares. So that's the concept of the grid. Um, then the concept of framing is when we're gonna keep one hoop around our frame, which is about from our forehead to our hip. We're gonna keep this frame the whole time. So instead of playing around with, our, um, with all the corners, we're gonna now do the same thing, but we're gonna really focus on keeping yourself in the center of this frame. So you can do some isolations, maybe a barrel roll. You're in the, in the center of that frame. And just thinking about keeping your audience's eye on this circle right in front of you. And what I like to do to, to keep, to make that illusion a little bit more special is to use the same color hoops so the audience can't really tell when you're changing it, right? So you might want to do one of these. You're keeping, oops, sorry, Susan. You're keeping that center hoop in the middle and you're keeping yourself framed and your audience doesn't know which hoop is coming in and which is going. Is that, is that making sense for everybody? Yeah, some head nods, hoop waves, cool. Okay, so that's the concept of framing. Um, and then, I'm going to show you what I refer to. Again, this is all just in my head. So this is how I keep track of what I'm doing. Um, what I call my three tech positions. So number one is this. So you are framed in the middle and you have one hoop off to the side. So this is the same, pretty much the same as this, right? Once both, hoop, both thumbs are facing up, one hoop is framing your body and one hoop is out to the side. So I call this tech one. This is my, my super comfy position. Uh, Becca, put your, your fingers touching each other. Your thumbs are facing up. Yep, that's it. Beautiful, everybody looks perfect. Yep. So this is what I call tech one. Then tech two is when both of the hoops are framing you. So you're just gonna turn both hoops in, yep and, or your thumbs can be up, they can be flipped. One can be up, one can be down, doesn't really matter. But this, the idea that both of your hoops are in the center around you. 
And then the third tech position is when both of your hoops are out to the side, extended. Depending on the size of your hoop, they might be, you might not be fully extending, but that's the idea, right? Um, or in the corners. Right. So the concept is either one's in the middle, one's in, and one's on the outside. Both are in the middle or both are on the outsides. Is that, is that making sense with the ideas of framing and grid work? Cool. So the way that my brain works is I would think like, okay, say I'm in this like really jacked up position like this, right? Like how, I don't know how I'll get here. Maybe I try to do something funky and I can't, can't get out of it. What I want to do is I want to get to a place where I'm comfortable. So I'm going to do a little switch. I'm going to fly around and I'm going to get here because here I know I can do, I know I can start from here and work something, right? Because now I'm back in this grid. Does that make sense? So even if you're just like, you know, like a, you know, failed escalator or something and you're all over the place, you know, you can flip in and get back into something where you know that this is a safe starting point. So either this one, this one, or this one will be nice little like resting points and like your best friends. Cool. Okay. Two more concepts that I think will are important for um, learning how to do your own tech and coming up with your own ideas is um, the concept of a switch. So a switch is when you're just switching your grip. So let's start it this way. Take your hoops in front of you like this, both thumbs, and just flip them so that both your, so your wrists are crossed and your thumbs are upside down. So all you're gonna do, so this is kind of, we can't really do much here without getting tangled, right? Because we're already tangled. But there's a good chance we're gonna end up in this position from some of our other moves that we're working with, right? So in order to get back to our tech one, all we're gonna do is open up our hands and the hoop will rest on our pinky and then we're gonna re-grip. So we're gonna open up and then re-grip. That's it, that's, a, that's just a simple switch. So you can do that if your hands are stuck uh, like this. You can do it if one is upside down and one's not. Little switch. Looks good. Perfect. Looks good. So Dawn, just open your hands up. Per beautiful. Perfect. Yep. Nice, Becca. Yep. That's it. So fairly simple, a fairly simple move, but it will allow you to get back into that space where you can start here because this is kind of like your bread and butter. Okay. Everybody feeling good about these few concepts that we're working with? Awesome. Okay. And then the last concept, which is a little more, uh, a little trickier um, and is much more conceptual and needs a little bit of time to practice, but I wanted to make sure you knew about it, is the thread the needle concept. So I'm gonna show you a few moves that are all actually the same move, okay? So all that is all the same exact thing. The only difference is how long you hold on to the hoop and how fast you're going, but it's all the same concept. So let me show you that from the side. So from the side, you can see that one hoop is going, being pushed out and one's coming in. So to learn that, it looks like most of you have an, the idea of how to do thread the needle. So I'm just gonna give it a quick explanation. So if you're holding your hoops like this, both at both of your hoops at six o'clock with your wrist facing down, you're going to take your right hand and you're gonna push forward across to your left shoulder like this. And your other hoop is gonna come close to you to your right hip. So you're kind of crossing them, but you're not only crossing them 
here, you're also crossing them this way. So it's this nice diagonal plane that gives you a ton of room in here to do whatever you need to do. Yep. And then once they're there, you're going to drop them, regrip, and then you're back here. Yep, perfect. And then you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to start this time with your left hand going up and your right hand going back and down. That's good. Beautiful. You guys look awesome. So the idea of for the needle is that concept of giving yourself space on the uh, on this plane, but also making it look like the hoops are just magically passing their spaces um, is is one of the concepts that will help you create this nice magic illusion. So I'm going to change. Sorry, I realized I was using two of the same color hoops. So that probably wasn't the most helpful. So <laughs> let me explain that one more time. So you're pushing your right hoop towards your left shoulder and pulling your left hoop in towards your right hip. Drop, come back, switch sides, drop, come back. Looks good. Looks like everybody has the idea of that and is understanding that that will give you space here. Cool. So that's the first, you know, I guess half or the first portion of the class is just to understand some of those concepts. So I want to give everybody a few minutes just to mess around with it, do some grid work, make sure you feel comfortable. Um, and then I'm going to teach you two little combos, and if we have time, two extra tricks. And please feel free to ask any questions or if anybody needs clarification or close up, I'm happy to do whatever you need. Are you alternating what hoop goes in front for like each round? Like when you do is your right hoop in front and then the next time you do it, your left hoop in front or is it you keep going? Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it makes perfect sense. Yes, that's, you're alternating. So the first time you do it, your right hoop goes on top and then the next time your left hoop goes on top. It takes a little bit of getting used to. One of the things that you can do to practice is it's really much more difficult to do it when you're when you're trying to do it tight. You can practice doing it a little bit wider. That's the same. You're, what you just did is the exact same thing. Yep. It's the same concept. It's just much more slowed down and controlled because you're holding on to the hoop a little bit longer. But you you have it. Okay. So I'm going to teach you all a little um, a little combo. So one of the things that um, I noticed when I was first started getting into double hoops is that my muscle memory would always. So I'd start out and I'd be doing you know some interesting stuff, and then my hoops would end up in one hand, and I my stupid brain would put them into an escalator. <laughs> but I still have two hoops in my hand, <laughs> and now I'm stuck with two hoops in one hand, and I have to like. You know, how am I going to make it look cool without just doing this, right? So one of my favorite ways of getting out, of the, lots of head nods, thank you. <laughs> one of, uh, good to know I'm not alone. One of my favorite ways to get out of that is to do, um, is to do a toss, two hoop, one hand toss. So it looks like, it can look like this. It can look like this where you can, oops, sorry, where you can cross your hands after. You can do a double juggle toss. You can do a chest roll. So just knowing that double, that little toss, only tossing one hoop, um, I think it maybe adds a lot of magic because it you can start out with looking like you have one hoop, or maybe your muscle memory gets you here, and then you can make it separate them and look really cool. So how do we do that? 
Well, that was nice, Vic. So we're gonna hold both of our hoops. My pink hoop is in is the back hoop. So I'm really gonna grip that with the, the pad of my hand on my thumb. And that as much of my hand free as I can possibly have, as much of my fingers as I can possibly have free, I'm gonna use for my green hoop. So you have like most of your grip is here and then this one is just kind of dangling, right? So you're gonna start low, give yourself a little bit of momentum and you can feel, I don't know if you can see. So you can see that green hoop is rocking, but my other hoop is pretty sturdy. My pink hoop's pretty sturdy. And you're just gonna let go with your fingers and then grab it. So you're only letting the hoop that's closest to your nose out. Good. Nice. And it's much easier if you have a thinner tubing hoop. So for us who are using three quarters today, sorry. <laughs> so um, this little combo that I'm going to show you starts out with that. So we're going to start up with that and you're actually going to cross your arms. So from the front, it looks like this. You have your, my pink hoop is solid in my hand. My green hoop is, is wiggling. I'm going to toss it and I'm going to sneak this pink hoop under it in this pattern. Nice. Perfect, Ellie. Nice, Vic. Yes, beautiful, Sarah. Nice, I think everybody had it, perfect. Wow, that was great, got it on the first try. So we're gonna do our little toss, our sneak under, and our arms are crossed. So our audience, remember your audience is your camera, right? So your audience is in front of you and your hoops are off to your side, and your arms are crossed. Your green hoop, our green hoop, so which is in our my left hand, so the hoop that's in your left hand is gonna do this. It's gonna come up back over your head and then it's gonna do this nice little push out to the side. Here. At the same time, your pink hoop is gonna do the same exact path, but in front of you. So you end up like this. Beautiful, nice job, Vic. Yep. Okay, let me show you one more time. So to break it down, you're gonna do your toss. You're gonna catch in cross arms. Okay. The hoops are gonna be framing you at some point, right? So right now they're on, they're on my right side. At some point in the middle, they're gonna be framing me for a second. And then I'm gonna push my back hoop out so it's off to the side. Yep, so you should be in this kind of weird position here, but we can continue that by going into a nice little barrel roll. Beautiful. So the whole combo itself is toss, crisscross catch, HLI over, and then a little barrel roll. Nice, looks good. So I think you're adding a slight smear in there, which is actually really pretty, but the uh, back one instead of, yes, and then just push it straight out. Um, I think you added a fold, it's okay, just push, like uh, iso pop, I guess you call it. Yeah, awesome. Nice. Looks good. Nice. Awesome. Cool. Everybody feel comfortable with that? Everybody looks pretty good. Yeah? 
Awesome. Okay. Um, so that's one little, I don't know, I just came up with it a couple weeks ago. I've been doing it a lot. I really like it. I like how it lines up here. And then you get a nice little dynamic spin in there. Um, okay. Another thing that I'm going to show you guys is we're going to start in, um, we're going to start in tech one. And we're going to do a little bit of uh, framing, you know, some framing concepts. So the first thing we're going to do is um, a isolation versus an extension. So our center hoop is just going to be doing an isolation. And our outside hoop, our hands are going to be pretty much in the same location the whole time. But you're going to, when it gets, when your outside hoop gets to the bottom, you're going to flip your hand. I'm sorry, this is um, an extension versus a smear. I'm sorry, not an isolation. I apologize. So your, let me see, so your right hand is going to be, just be doing this, just an extension all the way around. So you know when it gets to the bottom, you have to let it ride the switch. You making sense? All right, let's start. I'm sorry, let's start over. So we're going to start with our outside hoop first. It's going to be here. We're just going to do a simple extension. So it's going to drop down. You're going to open your hand so that you can flip and recatch it on the other side so that it can do a nice big circle around you. Yeah, that's it. That's a nice big circle. Now we're going to add our second hoop and we're going to add a smear to that. So, our, so we're going to do our extension here while it's going down. We get about as far as we can get to the other side. Our center hoop is going to smear back around and our right hoop is going to continue that nice circle. So we go as far as we can until we get into this awkward little spot, smear the hoop behind us so that that opens up space so that we can carry our elbow around. You want to kind of keep your hands generally together the whole time for a nice illusion, nice clean illusion. That's good. Can you do it from the back? Can you turn around? Absolutely. Okay, so this is my outside hoop. Um, I'm going to drop down. I'm going to regrip at the bottom so that I can catch it on this side. So my pinky is up, my thumb is facing down. My center hoop is going to smear behind me so that it opens this space up for this, for this arm and elbow to go through. Ah. Is that better to do it from the back? No, that's, that's good. Okay, cool. Looks good. I think everybody's just about there. Does anybody have questions? Clarifications? Okay. Um, okay, so that is a smear versus an extension. Another thing we can do with, which is pretty much the same concept, we can take, instead of our outside hoop being starting with thumb up, start it with your thumb down. And my ceiling fan is gonna hate me for this, but <laughs> you're gonna basically do the same thing. But when you can't go anymore, when you get to the top, add a palm spin. Ooh. Yeah, nice. So you're starting with your thumbs in the opposite direction. Your framing hoop is thumb up, your outside hoop is thumb down. You're gonna do that same thing where you're isolating as far as you can go until it's uncomfortable. When you start to smear, palm spin at the top, regrip, and then you're back here. We'll do that from the, uh, from the back if that was helpful. So you're starting here, isolating down to here until you can't go anymore. The hoop, your center hoop smears back. Top one does a nice little palm spin and then you regrip. Nice. 
Uh oh, you okay? <laughs> Cool. So you can start to kind of play with those, right? So you have your smear versus your extension. Then you do like a little flip so that your palm is upside down. And then do a little smear versus palm spin. Nice. Let's go. And then if you end up, um, maybe sometimes you don't fully catch the palm spin and you end up kind of like here or something. Barrel roll is your best friend. You can always barrel roll. Um, and the other thing is you can always just do a little side palm spin and just give it a little toss so that it's back where you want it to be. Yep. And then it's, it looks really fancy, but really you're just like, oops. <laughs> okay. Um, what else do I want to teach you guys? Uh, so that was smears okay so along the same concept as smears i don't know what this is called but i'm just going to call it a uh, triangle fold so it looks like this so <laughs> so you can you're going to take your your bottom hoop is doing this your outside hoop is going down at your hip and then flipping off so that your hoop is upside down on the side. That's all it's doing, this nice little triangle. Mm -hmm. And then your inner hoop is doing, you're keeping your, um, your wrist, you're starting your wrist here, then you're gonna separate your wrists. So your left, your inner inside hoop is doing a smear and your right hoop is just doing this triangle fold, but you have to do the smear so it gives it the, the space for the path, right? So you're together on the side, separated here, together upside down on the other side. So we're starting in our favorite position, tech one. Your outside hoop is gonna go down to your hip. Your inside hoop is gonna smear behind your left shoulder so that your wrist is facing outward from your forehead. And then you're going to meet on the other side. Yes. Yep. 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 Yes. I see it clicking. Beautiful. Okay. One, two, three. So this is a, and this is a great example of, we need a switch here, right? What are we going to do here? Just open up your palms, do a little grid work and you're back in your nice comfy position. Make sense? I see you had a couple of people join while I was teaching that. So I'm just gonna run through it again really quickly. Welcome everyone. Um, so um, the beginning in the beginning of the class, we talked about a couple of uh, positions that are the most comfortable or the best places to start. One of them is with you in the center, one hoop on the outside. One of them is when both of your hoops are in the center and the other is when they're both on the outside. So if we're starting in this position, we're gonna, it's called, I'm calling it a triangle fold. So your inside hoop is gonna smear behind you so that your wrist is facing outward from your forehead and your right wrist is gonna tap your belly button. And then you're gonna continue that exact pattern and fold to the side and your wrist will be upside down. And then a nice way to get out of this is just do a little switch. Open up your palm, open up your hands, and your hoops will switch. Just drop your, just drop them, and they'll, they'll switch. Trust thyself. Yep. <laughs> nice. So one, two, three, and then the other option, of course, is you could go back. So this way, you can just follow that same path all the way back. Everybody feeling okay with that? Do we want a few minutes to mess around with the things that we've learned or move forward? All right, wave your hoops if you wanna move forward. All right, sounds good, okay. Um, 
Okay. Uh, the other, another nice little move it, that involves a smear. Smears are really versatile because they allow this space in the front just for a second to move this, this other hoop around. So we learned that when we did the smear, it kind of gives you that space for your elbow to kind of sneak by. So smears are very versatile in the world of tech. Um, so we're gonna do um, a horizontal linear isolation, better known as an ISO slide or a cat eye. Is everybody familiar with this single hoop move? We start off to one side and we drive the hoop down until we can't go anymore. We let go and we ride it back. So it gives this nice straight line and it starts from this spot in the grid, now it's framed to now it's over to the side. We're thinking in these kind of in our box. So we can add a little smear to that. So if we wanted to do that, do a HLI in front of us this way, we kind of, we would get stuck, right? So in order to open up that space, we're just gonna add a smear. So the outside hoop, we're gonna start with our center hoop around us in tech one, Steffi's favorite position. And our, our inside hoop, which is in, is everybody left-handed? I think, I mean, right-handed. I think everybody, it looks like everybody is cool. Okay. So our left hand is gonna smear behind us in, this, in the same way as it just did, where we start kind of out of our forehead and then this way, wrist of the forehead and out in that direction. While that's happening, our right hoop is just gonna roll and slide across. And then you can just slide it right back. So I'll do that from behind because I think that's a little bit kind of helpful. So it's starting here. My inside hoop is gonna come back and that clears this space in front of me. So this smears behind me and my right hoop goes all the way across and I meet at the other side. And then you can do the same thing on the way back. So you're just gonna smear it again, wrist out from your forehead, and then it'll roll back over to the other side. Cool. Beautiful. Yep, and then you just wanna make sure that you're you're keeping your, just for the, the sake of the magic and the illusion, just try to keep these lines really fresh and clean. So we're thinking, I'm getting my hoop from this square to this square to this square. So this nice, clean line straight across. Beautiful. And all of these moves um, can be learned forwards, backwards, up, down, right? Because if you think of it as a square, you can flip it. So you could you could do it this way too. You could learn it with your left hand. Okay. Um, Also going to, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is a move that takes, um, that uses the thread the needle concept. And that is um, this one that I do all the time, which is um, vertical linear isolation. So we know that this is a horizontal linear isolation. This is a vertical linear isolation. So it's just going from the top to the center, to the bottom, to the center, to the top, center, bottom, center, top. It's the same concept as going from side to side, but you're just switching the way that you're thinking about it. So we're gonna start in the center. We're gonna drop the hoop down, straight down until you're in this like kind of funky, funky grip here. You're gonna isolate over to the other side of the hoop while it's at your hip. And then you're just going to push it up. Okay, so we're going to start start here. We're going to push, drive the hoop down in a nice, nice straight line. 
Isolate over and then push your hoop up. And then you're gonna isolate back across. So you, you can see, if you think about it in squares, we're going from one little point to another. So one point, one point, point, point. Hoop, 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 hoop. And that's making this nice, clean, straight line up and down. So this is one where you want to extend it. So you're, let's let's start here. You want to extend all the way down, push all the way down till your wrist is like upside down. Do your little isolation so that you're now comfortably gripped on the other side of the hoop at your left hip. Push all the way up, unless you have a ceiling fan. <laughs> push up, give it some nice length, and then isolate back over so that your shoulder is aligned with your with your wrist. And then you're going to push right back down and do it again. Looks like magic. Takes a little getting used to, but it's worth it's worth the practice. It's really a beautiful move. So now that uh, we're working on that, get ready to do it with your left hand. So same concept with our left hand, right? So we're gonna start pretty much at our left hip. We're gonna drive it down until our wrist is kind of backwards. We're gonna isolate across our hip to the other point. We're gonna push up all the way. We're gonna isolate back over. So our, our wrist and our shoulder are aligned. And then we're gonna push back, drive back down. Isolate over. Push up, isolate down, over, push down. Isolate, push up, isolate, push down. Left hand is, they say train it from the start, but I didn't listen, so. <laughs> they say learn everything on your left and right hand and then lefty, Always oh, doesn't get any love. So let's let's do it together. So we're gonna start in the center with our left hip, left hand at our left hip. We're gonna drive the hoop straight down, nice straight, clean line. We're gonna isolate across the top of our hand to regrip at our right hip. We're gonna push up. We're gonna isolate across the bottom of the hoop and then we're gonna drive back down. So just practice trying to get these into a nice fluid motion. And for me, it's helpful to think of my four points. So hip, shoulder, shoulder, hip, hoop, 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 hoop. Nice little line. Nice. Looks good. Awesome. You ready to do them at the same time? <laughs> okay. So from from the front, it's gonna look like this. Let's see if I can. I don't know if you can still hear me, but. It's gonna look like the hoops are just going up and down. Okay. But in order to create the space for that to happen, we have to go back to our thread the needle concept, which is you're re I'm really doing this. I'm really giving myself this space in between and pushing the top one in the front and the bottom one in the back always. So this, this is what it looks like from the front, these nice clean lines. And this is what it looks like from the side. So you're giving yourself a lot of space to do that, to do that exchange so that your hoops don't smack 
together. So let's try to let's try to do it. Uh, let's try to get one down. So let's start like this. So we have our right hoop is at our hip and our left hoop is at our left shoulder. <laughs> Trying to think of how to explain and like break it down in one. So we're gonna, we know that the next thing we have to do is isolate, right? So we're gonna isolate both hands at the same time. Bottom hand is gonna isolate to your left hip, your right, wait. Give me one second. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. So your right hand is gonna escalate, is gonna do the isolation, but your left hand is gonna start to come down. So they meet in the middle here. Does that make sense? Sorry for the confusion there. So you're gonna start like this, your left hand at the top, your right hand at the bottom, and your right hand is gonna isolate over as your top hoop is coming down and they're gonna cross kind of meet here. My bottom hoop is in the back, my right hoop, my um, top hoop is in the front. And this is where they cross. Yep, looks good. So now we're like this, we know that the bottom one is gonna isolate and then we're gonna bring them back together so they cross again. a lot of moving parts it's and this is going to take a lot of practice and that's totally fine i just want to make sure that the understanding is there of the concepts that we that we were learning today and how to put those into something that is a an interesting move right so we're taking the concept of our grid pieces framing thread the needle all of these things are going into just this one little thing that looks really neat So lots of practice with the making sure that the left hand is nice and fluid. Lots of thought about how to get your hoops not to tangle. I can't hear you if you're trying to talk there. How do you start it? Like what position do you start from? So I typically, I in flow, I start here. So this would be like the second tech position that I would call. And then I would separate them. So the first part is separating them. So one up and one down. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna isolate the bottom one across to your other hip. I'm gonna try to do this as slowly as possible, if I can. Would it, help, would it be helpful to do it from the back? Has that been helpful? Um, the front is cool, like I'm getting it. Okay. It's gonna take a minute. <laughs> sure. Yeah, of course, of course. So if you start here, you're separating like this. I'm gonna be a little off center, so can you see? Right. Everyone getting nice and frustrated with that one? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the middle, are your hands together or are your hands like on opposite sides? They are on the same side when they meet. They, they're separated when they're at the top and the bottom and then they meet on this side, they come together and then they meet on this side. I'm sorry, they separate and then they meet on that side. That looks great, Vic. 
Kelly killing it. Cool. Yeah, so I would say to learn this one, you probably want to start by being in this, being here, because we know, or we're learning that this is this is a nice comfy position, right? Like we know we can do some cool stuff from here. So let's get here. So let's start here. And then it's easy enough to separate them, right? And eventually your brain will start to learn that you're moving as one, you're moving as one part. So we're isolating at the same time, coming across. We're isolating at the same time we're coming across. We're isolating. Sweet. Separate, meet, separate, meet, separate, meet, separate. You kind of like give your brain some rhythms to get into or like beats to do to kind of start to align for you. Cool. So we have like, we only have about nine minutes left. Um, I'm gonna try to teach one other really cool move that um, we can learn two different, two different versions of, um, but I think I'm going to learn, teach you the behind the back version, because I think that aligns with what we're working on. So we have been talking about doing HLIs, which is horizontal linear isolations, which is basically just a cat eye, ISO slide. And then we learned how to do a VLI, which is a vertical linear, linear isolation. Same concept, just making it vertical. Now we're gonna do them at the same time. And in order to do that, we already know, I know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if we don't get through this in eight minutes, that's totally okay. Um, so we're gonna do them at the same time. And how do we do that? We have to get ourselves out of the way, right? So one of them has to go behind us, right? So this is what it looks like. We can do it. All right, I'm gonna show you again. Starts like this in our favorite position. And we're gonna end up in a very similar position, but our, our hands are gonna be in a different, uh, you know, our hoops are gonna be in the same spot, but our hand grip is gonna be different. So my green hoop is gonna be doing a vertical linear isolation. My left hand is gonna be doing a vertical linear isolation. My right hand is gonna do a horizontal at the same time. So this is what it looks like all together. So you can see that this is what this hoop is doing. It's going across behind my back and ending up in, this is called chicken grip. So let's do the right hand first. So our right hand starts over here in tech one. It's gonna do a nice little HLI all the way over. It's gonna go behind us and you're gonna end up here. Got it? Looks good. Let's do that a couple more times. Boom. Shake those wrists out. Start off to the side. HLI over, behind the back, HLI back in this little chicken grip. Okay? What your left hand is doing at the same time is a vertical linear isolation. So it starts in the center in our nice little frame spot, drops down, isolates over, comes up. And then by that time, your other group will be back here. So we know our, our two parts, right? So we know our HLI, we start on the side, we push over, we come back, we're here. We know our, our VLI, we start in the middle, we drop down, we isolate over, we come up, we isolate over, and we're back here. So let's put them together. I'm gonna show you this from behind. So if you have any feedback, just make sure you unmute yourself because I can't hear, I can't see what's happening. Um, so we're gonna start here. The inside hoop is gonna drop and this hoop is gonna to come to the center. That's gonna give, when this hoop drops, it gives it the space for this one to come over here. Perfect, I think everyone looks good. Then from here, <laughs> We're gonna take our outside hoop and come behind our head. And at the same time, we're gonna start moving this hoop up. 
yeah, I, you all end, ended up in the right spot. <laughs> so I didn't see you actually do it. So center hoop drops, gives the space for the, for the outside hoop to roll across. By this time, you should be in a little plus sign. Your bottom hoop should be in that break wrist position. Your right hoop is outside. We can't go any further from here, right? So here, drop. Perfect. Now we're going to take our back hoop and we're going to pull it behind our head. We're also going to pull this center hoop up a little bit. See how they align right here? That's our framing concept. It's going to go up. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, can't go that slow. Yeah. And it's going to touch the top, um, the top grid, and then it's going to come back, and they're going to meet right here. But your hand, your wrist is going to be all funky. How's everyone feeling? I'm going to give that a couple more tries. Anyone needs have specific questions or need specific advice? Looks good, looks good, good. So we start here. Let's do, let's do one nice clean one together. So we're gonna start in our position here. I'm gripping these hoops, they're hot. Okay, <laughs> start here. We're gonna take our center hoop and drop it and our right hoop is gonna slide across. Ready, slide across. Now we're in a plus sign position. Now our back hoop, our our vertical, our horizontal hoop is going to go behind our head, and that's going to give this hoop the space to come up, and we're going to meet again on the side. Yes, that looks good. Lindsay, it looks like you added just a little tiny fold in there, which is really pretty. <laughs> um, and then at the end, because that's exactly what you kind of have to do, right? You're in this weird position. And we want to get out of it, right? So what can we do? Um, we can we can smear, kind of pull this across. We can uh, let's see what else we can do to get out of that. That's what I usually do. Yeah, from here I usually just kind of smear this one behind myself and give myself some space so that I can get back into this position. <laughs> How's everyone feeling? It looks great. All of these are really, really hard to get like on the first try. But if you start to think, keep thinking of things in this tic-tac-toe, keep thinking of things as a grid where your center circle is always there. Keep thinking of yourself as the star. I am in the frame. How can I keep myself in the frame? What can I do to keep myself in this little center frame? Even Goddess Machine is using the concept of framing. You're staying in the center. And yeah, and then once you start to do those things on your own, you'll start to be able to come up with different interesting pathways. So like, how can I get, do something like this? How am I doing that? You're crossing, you're using a thread the needle concept, right? So you're pushing, you're pulling, one's in front, the other one's in front. And that is, that concludes, my class.